Now let's take a look at how we can use item types to comprise the content of our annotation. And to show the final product, if I select to annotate element, all the elements in my drawing, I can have it labeled my parcels. And so here we have a bearing and a distance along each edge of our parcel. We have our parcel name, the area in square feet and acreage. And then we have three item types, the, the name of the owner, the book, and the page number. And all of this can be set up uh, through item types. So let's take a look at how we do this. First thing we want to do is look at the setup of our item type itself. Going to the DGN library where the item types are created. There's an item type in here, for example, for the boundary name, area, and item type. The boundary name is just a property of the feature definition we've drawn. Then we have the area, which is a property, a civil property. And then we have it set to square feet here. And then we have it repeated, but this time our units are acreage. And then the point of this video series is we have three item types all underneath ownership we have owner then we have description one and we have description two and so all of these you will see the field type is item types and the ownership is selected and so at, under assets here you will see under ownership we have these three options so if we take a look at our item types Underneath ownership, you will see there is an owner. There is line description item one and line description item two. So the way this fits together, the item type feeds information into the text favorite. The text favorite feeds to the annotation definition and the annotation definition feeds to the annotation group and then the annotation group feeds to the feature symbology. And so this is the flow of how these item types are introduced within our text favorites. And the item types are simply additional properties that can be assigned to a feature. If we take a look at our feature definition used to draw the existing property lines, it has an item type attached to it that we just looked at for assets and then ownership. And so those will then populate underneath the feature definitions. Now you could place defaults in here if you want to. Once you have your item type attached to your feature definition, that feature definition points to a feature symbology. And that feature symbology for the linear element points to an annotation group just like in the flowchart that we looked at. And in the annotation group, we have existing property boundary. We can right click on that and manage. And if we look at this particular entry, it's located as a horizontal point in the center of our existing right away property. We have told it to place text with this particular element template to control the symbology. We're putting it at an angle value of zero and we have selected our text favorite we just looked at called boundary name area and item types. We have told it to be view independent. So if the view is rotated, it'll always read horizontally. And you may want to go ahead and toggle on to manage modifications. So if a label gets moved, it will remember that move. And this is just one of the things that we're showing here. We can also label, we looked at the, the bearing label, which you'll see that here. We have the distance label, which is here. And so they're just calling different text favorites and also the placements are adjusted. For example, if a bearing or a distance would be tangent along that particular element, et cetera. And so these item types will provide us the information to feed and generate that label. And so if I go to look at that parcel and let's say that I made a mistake and it was supposed to be on page 82. Well, as soon as I type that and tab out or enter, you'll see that that gets updated. And so these item types are very powerful and we can use those when we build our text favorites to drive our automated annotation.